Hello, welcome to Brockwell Lane and yet another new project. Welcome to the new O-Gage version of Brockwell Station, which is a Great Western Station terminus, uh, which as of yet hasn't got tracked down, but I've only just started it really. Uh, now, I've not been on the channel for a while. The last update I did was I started in O-Gage at the other side of the room and uh, I was trying to work out the curves and things. That didn't really go to plan because I had a broken window in this room and I had to have that replaced. So I had to take the, the bit over the uh, door off and the bit under the window. So it kind of got to ruined a little bit. So I didn't do anything for ages and ages. Uh, problems at home and work and things like that just put me off modeling altogether, to be honest with you. Um, but I'm back. Uh, I'm back with a project. Uh, this plan struck me um, one day when we were thinking of a, uh, a layout for doing for the club um, which is a Great Western um, branch line station and I thought mm, I've got some ideas I could do that uh, do a similar thing at home so we've probably got two projects on the go uh, the club layout and my home layout um, but so as you can see I ain't got any track down at the moment because I've just been painting this baseboard this is where all the pool layout used to be I know, I'm always changing layouts and ripping them up and starting again, it's just, I can't help it, I just like planning and doing new layouts. So yeah, this used to be the double O other pool, um, hence there is a lot of um, scruffy board uh, with uh, bits of ballast and you see where the tracks were there and the previous brock hole layout, which I took down because I didn't really like it to be honest, it wasn't, uh, it was a little bit too complicated and it was a problem with the wind and all that sort of stuff. So I need to scrape all this up, which is taking forever to be honest. So I've done that bit down there. Uh, but I thought, well, to make it a bit more exciting, because I don't want to spend the next two weeks just scraping this up, I'll uh, do a bit of proper modelling and build myself a little station. So first of all, I think I might have shown you this before because I've had it a while. This was a station building which I bought from Malk's Models in Ilkeston. And it was somebody had scratch built it. It didn't have any glazing. It was falling apart. It got spiders living in it. It was a bit of a mess to be honest. But I thought I could do something with that. So I painted it up. Uh, put some glazing in there. Uh, just fixed bits and strengthened the construction and things like that. So it looks okay. It's not perfect. I'm not going to get too close, but. It looks nice uh, from usual viewing angles, and I've put lots of details around it to look, uh, to look uh, pretty good, I think. And it's very reminiscent to my old double O uh, Brockwell layout I did a few years ago, which in some ways I wish I hadn't taken apart and, and scrapped. Um, I've got a few videos from, I don't know, um, three or four years ago, I think. But that was a that was a great Western Terminus, and I'd got the Highly Station from Batman on that, and I collected all these locomotives, and they were lovely. Um, and I'm going to do the same in our gauge now. I've got a little bit more room in here. Um, I don't know what the length of this room is. Um, six, seven, probably about 10, 12 foot, something like that, I think, down here. Uh, I'm not going to go around any corners. I'm not going to have too many points because, the, well, as I learnt with the previous little layout I was trying to do on the other side, which, you, which is probably my last update, the corners are a bit of a, a nuisance. Um, my Mark 1 coach was causing me problems, it was a bit big, so I actually sold that Mark 1 coach. So I'm going to get myself an auto coach, I've got a DMU, uh, plenty of wagons and things, so that should be quite uh, good enough for this little end-to-end -end layout. This is a Pico uh, signal box, you know, gauge, it's um, wooden, uh, wood and plastic, I think, mostly laser cut uh, wood. And uh, there's one of these on Little Burford layout, which was a great inspiration for for me building this one, really. I, I'm seeing his uh, layout, Dan's layout at a couple of exhibitions and in magazines, and I just love it. That is also why I bought that uh, little 042 and the pannier behind it, which I love. The brilliant runners, these are Daypol models. Um, that one, the 042, I picked up for 150 quid on eBay second hand, it got bits missing. To be honest, with these models, there's always bits missing or, or off in the box, I mean. Um, you, you know, they're a little bit delicate, so as long as... But I'm, I don't mind that, because I'm quite prepared to, to uh, fix them up. And as long as they look good when I've done with them, like that one I think does, then I'm more than happy. Um, 
but it, yeah, it's a bit of a problem with Daples uh, models, but they are inexpensive, so I forgive them. So looking from above, um, but basically the uh, first thing I did was cut out this platform shape from foam board. And foam board, if you don't know what it is, I got it from Hobbycraft, it's sheets of, in fact, hang on, I'll show you. So this is foam board, it's, um, it's like polystyrene foam there, and it's got paper covering, and these come in huge sheets. Um, this is just an off cut one end. And you get four of them for a tenner, or you did do at Hobbycraft uh, when I bought these ages ago. I need to get some more actually. But this is quite strong. Um, I mean, you ideally need some stuff on top of it strengthening, um, but it's a really good um, thing to make your buildings out of, platforms. Oh, the, the, the um, sky paper at the back, not the sky, but the back scene. I made that out of the same stuff. Talking about scenes, I've got that one on the end there, which uh, is probably going to be a scenic break. Well, it is going to be a scenic break. It's going to go under there. Probably a bridge in front of it to hide it a little bit. And I've not cut that yet. I've not fixed it down either because I don't know exactly where that's going. And I've also got a lot of scraping up of this rubbish from the previous layout. But we'll get there. And that will go through to a little fiddle yard, which again, I'll have to scrape all this up, paint it black or something, make it look a bit more presentable. So I haven't got a very big fill yard, but I might do some sort of transverser if I'm brave enough. I'm not really good at woodwork and things, but we'll try that. So we'll come through onto this side. Now, in by the points here, yeah, I've got some straights. Um, this is just drying because I've just put some emulsion on there to try and make it a little bit more presentable. I can also see bits I've missed that need scraping up when I've done that as well. So that's just uh, Dulux Emulsion Test Pot, which I've got for free. Um, these side pieces. This is embossed uh, brick paper, a bit of a crude way of doing it, but it's, it's all ready coloured. I'm going to dress that up with some uh, paving stones, um, these laser cut paving stones, which I'm going to glue down the edge there. I'm going to, I think I'm going to do a cattle dock here with some leftover uh, gate posts and things. I'm going to try and do that there, I think. Uh, so we've got some cattle wagons in that sort of bay platform type thing. So there's going to be two tracks there. I need to get some points for a crossover uh, just there, so I run around those and put uh, wagons in there. Um, I think we're going to have a track around the back there where you see those wagons. Now at this end, um, I'm going to try and use that transverser instead of points to save space and just make it a little cheaper, because otherwise I'll have to buy a lot of points to try and squeeze them in. So. I don't know, there might only be about three points on here, but we'll see, I'll get to that later when I've ordered them and planned this out properly and decided what I know, what I need. I know I need two rights there. Might put a side in there. I'm gonna to have to get that one onto this track or maybe it'll go through the back scene onto the transverse, I'm not sure yet. But I just thought I'd show you what I'm doing. I'm gonna continue a bit more now because I've got some details uh, to put on. I've got a weekend free, so well, we'll see what happens next. So over to my workbench, I've got some lamps there. They're from Pico. They're plastic uh, lamps and they come in a green colour, so I just painted those a Great Western livery. You can put LEDs in them, although I haven't done at the moment. A uh, little bit flimsy, they might get replaced at some point with some metal ones, but they'll do for now. There's four of those, so they're just drying in those clamps. Uh, I've also done the same as I always do, these signs which I really like, um, they're from Sankey Scenics and of course you can see the name Brockwell there and this is like photographic uh, good quality um, card that they're on so you cut them out and put them in various places around your layout so I need to build some sort of sign post for these um, large Brockwell signs so the Great West style, I don't know how I'm going to do that, maybe there's some available um, I've also got over here some corrugated plastic art on the base there. I'm going to try and make some Great Western huts uh, of some sort. I'll try and scratch build them because they're cheaper than buying the, the kits and I think they're fairly simple. And for reference material I've got these books. Um, there's three of these. Uh, this is Farringdon which is still on the exhibition circuit actually. It's a brilliant layout. And this is, there's loads of information in these. So I'll be looking through them and getting inspiration but if I can get anywhere close to that scene on the front there which uh, is not within my capabilities really but I'm going to try and strive for that sort of quality um, well I'll be quite happy and this is the same sort of thing I used for my double O version that was also sort of based around this and 
use these reference books. These are old books, about 93, I think these came out. I've had them since I was a kid. But they're really good for Great Western. The detail it goes into is ridiculous. Down to fish plates and ballast and all sorts of things. If you wonder what I've been doing whilst I've been away, I've got a secondary hobby, which is a little bit related. Still modelling. I'll just show you quickly what I've been up to. I also like building uh, model aircraft, so I've been doing a lot of kits recently because basically it was cheaper and uh, I just got back into it after years away, so I've been building all sorts of things here. There's um, quite a few different planes uh, over here as well. Uh, all of the film Top Gun, I've been making the Tomcats from there, Mavericks uh, F-18 with a little base there as well. Uh, all sorts of things I've been very busy with, which I don't normally put on YouTube, but I just thought I'd show you little bit of what I've been up to. It's quite a nice sideline and it's, uh, it helps you keep in um, with the model making. So a quick look at some of the engines that will be running on the Brockle This is my BR era. So we've got a Helgen Mogul, uh, we've got the uh, Great Western Rail Car in Blood and Custard. We've got a Lionheart uh, Pannier tank and there's another uh, 58XX there in black. So that's sort of early era um, models. There's a couple of diesels as well, don't know whether they're going to run on here. O3 might do. Uh, 40 is probably too big, that's going actually. Uh, 25, oops, I'm bang into this cabinet. Uh, 25, that might work on there, I don't know. Well, there's no A to the back there as well, but uh, that might be for a different project. We'll run those on the, um, the layout at the club anyway. Another local I've got, this is an interesting one. This is a Helgen Large Prairie. And uh, this hasn't actually got a motor in it. Um, Scott sold me this one. It was like a demonstration model for Helgen, which they sold off. Um, somebody had put a Hornby motor in it, but it, it wasn't quite uh, running as well as I'd hoped. So I took the motor out, and it's sort of a free-running engine, which I've weathered up and just used it for practicing uh, some paint effects and things. So that might get pushed around uh, or stood in the background, let's, let's say. But it was quite a good price, and it's, uh, it's a lovely static model, if nothing else. Few wagons there, these Daypole brake vans are a bit more modern though. There's a BR uh, Toad there behind that van, which I built um, from a Parkside Dundas kit, which I'm quite happy with, apart from the handrails, which are a bit wonky in places, but I struggle with that. But it's not too bad from a distance, and there's a nice little figure in there, which is from Modeloo, which are really brilliant fiddles, figures, and I hope to uh, get a few more of those for the new layout. That box van is one of several I've got. The Great Western ones are all from Minerva Models, uh, which is online only, but they are of really good quality. They're not a bad price, either between £40 and £50 pounds each, and I think they're probably even better than Daypoles, ready to run wagons. But I'm going to put the camera away because it needs charging, um, so I'm going to just get on with some detailing, some modelling, painting and things, and I'll come back to you in a little while. Right, well I've just been gluing these um, laser cut slabs down the edge of the platform and there's about 50 in a pack and would you believe it, I actually run out. So I'm going to have to go back through my emails and figure out who I ordered those from and get some more just to complete this bit, probably another packet of do. On here you can see I've started work on the cattle dock, these plastic posts from Pico which were left over from gate kits. I just put those in a pattern there. Uh, they've got holes in, so I should be able to put some wires through. I do need some little gates for the middle there. I'd put one gate there, and then I'll need painting, uh, which to start. So the lamps are just drying off there, ready for installing. And at the back there, you see I've got some Slater's um, fencing, which I'm going to figure out where I want those as well. Luckily, found my email, and these are actually from. Uh, railway laser lines, so I'll order another packet of those, there's 50 of those, it comes in a pack. Well I've painted the little posts, I've added a couple of extra in which are actually bits of rail, which is a bit of OM gauge track which I've had for years, um, which I flirted with at one time, uh, so I'm just cutting that off. Taking the sleepers off, I'm actually going to save those little sleepers because they might be of some use, in fact I found one use from already, if I turn them upside down they look a little bit like water troughs for the animals. So I need some little gates here, which I'm trying to kind of find online, I think, or try and scratch build them. Uh, but then I also need some wires to go between these in the holes in the posts. There you can see four in each, and I have a cunning plan to make those. 
this guitar needs its uh, strings changing and this one here the thicker one is going to be perfect for what I need so never throw old strings away if you know anybody plays guitar ask for their surplus guitar strings there we go just started putting some of those guitar strings through and they're looking pretty good just need to finish this side off and a little bit there as well um, so yeah quite effective then I'll paint them white well, I painted those bars uh, white, finished that end. Still need some gates uh, for there where it's open, but that's looking a lot better than it did. And I've also been busy putting up some fences uh, around the back there, which are the Slater's fences. I put those lamps up. I've made a little signboard for Brockwell, a little seat there as well, another one there. That one's not actually staying um, because that belongs to somebody at the club, so that'll be going back. But I'm going to use it as a template to make something similar to that uh, corrugated plastic card. So another lamp there, and I've curved that around the edge, uh, the fence around the end of that platform, that track. Um, just placed a couple of tracks down just to test, and I've got a pannier and a brake band there just to see how long I need that little head shunt. I've got a large range of course, I'm going to need to try that mogul and see if I can get that in the head shunt, although it is a big engine for this layout, but uh, probably the biggest thing I'm going to run. And at the other side there, a uh, fence, lamp and another Brockwell sign. So I'm liking the look of it. There we go, it does look quite a lot like my old 001 I had a few years ago, which is what I was kind of going for. And that's what it looked like coming to the station from the main line. Using this corrugated plaster card from Slater's, I've managed to mock up a couple of uh, little lamp pots, great with some lamp pots, um, not from, only from two sides, just to save some of this material, because they're going to actually sit somewhere like that, and you're only going to see that angle. So I'll get those primed up with some white primer, and then I'll get those painted, and we'll put those on the layout too. So sprayed up with some white primer, I'm now going to paint those a uh, great western colour, uh, I think it's light stone, although what I'm using is actually Tamiya XF15 which is um, flesh colour actually, but it's pretty close to uh, Great Western light stone I find, and if it's not I can always go over it later with something like some rail match or precision phoenix in the right colour, but to do as a base coat anyway, that's where I've done the fences in and lamp posts and things. Well, I painted the two lamp huts at the back in slightly different weathered finishes and I've also made a little lavatory for my signalman uh, which is a little hut made out of the same material and I'll get that painted up as well. So whilst I'm waiting for those to dry I'm going to make myself a little coal storage out of these coffee stirrers. There you go, finished. It's a little coal storage bunker for... Uh, the station, uh, waiting room, fire and things like that, so a bit of coal will go in that. I'll get that painted up a weathered wood colour. So there we are, painted up and ready to go on the railway line. That colour I've used isn't quite right, but it'll do for now. I'll get some proper Great Western Dark Stone and do them, just give them extra coat uh, later on. But I'm going to get them on the layout now. There we go, so it's going to need a bit more scraping and a base made here for the signal box properly. Uh, but there's a little toilet box that's going to go at the bottom of the stairs for the signalman. And there's lamp storage um, buildings and the little coal bunker will go along that edge of the platform against the blue sky. Just to add a little bit more detail and try and hide the fact that it's just a blue wall. So, I think I'm going to leave it there because I'm running out of time. But I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, next time should be more interesting because we'll be getting some tracks laid. 
Uh, but I'm quite happy with what I've got done today, or this weekend. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time on Broccoli. Subscribe, like, and bye-bye for now.